Hola, buenos días, es Nico. So good, man. So good. Hell, <laughs> should make you want to cry. I feel so good. You cry? Nah. It makes me want to. What you cry about? Shit, I cry so much sometimes, I feel like I'm gonna just turn into drugs. You just roll out into the water, right? Roll out into the water like all these other motherfuckers around here trying to drown their sorrows. Why you say that? I'm just listening to you, Nick. Oh. <laughs> so today I'm gonna be talking about something, um a little more personal so i may sound a little funny because i have my like whitening <laughs> my whitening thing in it's like a visa line so it's like think retainer that you wear at night to keep shit going so it's like i'm gonna sound a little stupid but i hope you guys can bear with me <laughs> basically today i'm going to be talking about masculinity and vulnerability so um i was originally gonna come on and talk about adam and adam for adam and there, well, first before we start, because I forgot to do this last time, if you want more content like this, follow me on Patreon at patreon.com slash Nico's Aesthetics. If you want, um, if you want humor, follow me on Twitter at Nico's Aesthetic, minus the S, because my last account got suspended at 28K, because that was one of the popular girlies. Um, if you want thirst traps, follow me on Instagram at Nico's Aesthetics, well, at instagram.com slash Nico's Aesthetics. Um, and if you want gaming, follow me at twitch.tv slash Nico's Aesthetics. It's a little crunchy at times because my internet is affordable. I'm gonna say what I said. It's affordable. So it's a little crunchy at times, but the chat be lit and the girls be having fun. We honestly be hooping and hollering. <laughs> but, um, aside from that, let me just get to the topic. Um, basically we're gonna be talking about masculinity and vulnerability. Once again, I'm sorry about my speaking. It's, I'm usually pronunciating a lot better, but, you know, this shit is in my mouth. So I was originally gonna talk about Adam for Adam and their PMP option, basically accepting and endorsing the whole meth within the gay community. Um, but I changed it after I stumbled across a post about Moonlight. And if you guys don't know, Moonlight is my entire aesthetic um, and <laughs> in my profile picture on my Twitch. It's, the, it's something that I really truly related to because I also struggled with masculinity along with being vulnerable. So I'm not gonna be giving you a story recap of the movie. Eventually I will because it's a very powerful movie that I believe every brown and black person of color should truly watch. Because even if you aren't black, you know, the Latino community struggles with machismo. So it's like, there is toxic masculinity there and it can also relate to this movie. So I believe that it's a universal movie for any person of color that's coming of age, you know, LGBT wise, that they should watch. Um, Basically, I'm going to be talking about how hypermasculinity has affected me throughout my life and how it has limited me and my emotional range and my emotional capacity and my relationships kind of thing. So at first, I'm going to talk about when I was a kid. I was always told that I was different, I was quiet. And when I got outed, I was told by my parents, well, by my grandma and my mom, that they always kind of knew, but it was still a toxic environment considering I came from a strictly Catholic background, you know, a mixture of cultures and stuff like that. Like both of my cultures did not accept homosexuality. So it was a very toxic time for me. And I was often met with corporal punishment whenever I would exhibit, exhume, what do you call it? Whenever I would display feminine traits, such as showing emotion or being too, emotive when I'm singing music, stuff like that, I would be met with repercussions. And it taught me to close myself in. It taught me to not be able to fully express myself, be it joy, be it anything other than anger, because that is what masculinity is. Or at least that's what masculinity is portrayed as. And I truly believe that masculinity is being able to be vulnerable with yourself as a man. 
because the fact that every time I was emotive, anytime I was crying or vulnerable, I was met with more violence and pushback. It truly taught me that I was not able to be a fully well-rounded person, that I had to be this caricature. And even throughout my teens, when I was growing up, I, I was not able to do what normal black and brown males were able to do because first I was known to be gay. So I was not really allowed out of my house by my family because of worries that I would do something homosexual. You know, like I would live in my truth outside of these walls. So I was never really given that range of freedom. So when I got to school, I related to Chiron and Moonlight because I too was met with pushback from the black community, pushback from the brown community, because I was still not the image of hypermasculinity that was enforced in both communities. So I was always the odd man out. And I always felt ostracized, even though I eventually found my friends, that too was a little toxic because I was a nerd, you know? I was a nerd and leaning on the feminine side. So when I found friends in Texas, they were predominantly white nerds. And that also came with a level of anti-blackness and racism that I had to face head on. And at that young age of being not quite able to confide in anyone, not being able to show vulnerability to anyone, but being met with microaggressions and pain at every turn, you eventually just begin to grow numb, you know? And it gets to the point that I wouldn't cry whenever I was met with violence at home, whenever I was met with violence um, outside, I just learned to shut my emotions in and just internalize it and move through that. And I understand that that's not healthy. And it, I truly believe that it, the trauma that I faced in my teens based on my sexuality and my lack of quote unquote commercialized masculinity has affected me in my adult life. And it, it truly, it baffles my mind that even though I am out of that age range and though I am trying to learn how to process my emotions, the LGBT community, be it gay, white, Latino, etc., also internalize that heteronormative idea that masculinity is a lack of emotions, that masculinity is being able to muzzle everything with a stonewall face. And it comes to the point that it also affects LGBT relationships. Like, as I said, I'm to the point that I can't cry normally. Like, it has to either be something very traumatic that allows me to show vulnerability in a public space of crying, or whenever I would bring up the trauma that I faced in my life with my, like, my mother, or, because I don't, I mean, my father, he's there for me, and he, he was even there for me when I was outed. He was the one that accepted me. I just don't, I don't have a level of vulnerability to even talk about that with my father because he he was in my life he was an active presence in my life I'm not gonna say he wasn't but it's I lived with my mom so it's not like I had him there every day and even though he would call I just could not find it in myself to open up and be vulnerable with him you know and the only time I've actively seen my father cry in my 24 years of life was at my grandmother's funeral and that's the only time I've ever seen him break down and cry or show true sorrow and emotion. And that's kind of telling, you know? This grown man that has, you know, raised me and been there for me at every turn of my life. Sorry, I'm scratching my head, it's itchy. Uh, he himself cannot properly e express emotion. Um, he obviously, he's a very loving father. He tells us he loves us all the time, but I've never seen him express emotion beyond anger and fatherly love in the specific situations where it's necessary. And I say that affects our relationships as adults in the LGBT community because as you see, toxic masculinity is prevalent with mask for mask, I don't like feminine men, etc. But we're all homosexual, so that means we're already all we're already on the outside of the heteronormative ideals. But people cling to these ideals to try to have a sense of normalcy and acceptance. I'm not like those other girls. I'm not like those gay guys like that are super feminine, but that also limits our potential in relationships. It, it limits our potential to show vulnerability and connect with someone because as soon as you do all oh, that's feminine and you're no longer interested. 
So you get into these situations where you're in a relationship with somebody you don't truly know because you're not allowing yourself to show vulnerability. You're not allowing yourself to truly connect with this person on a level that isn't this forced perception that everyone is putting out. Because I remember when I was um, on, when I was talking to people, they would be like, oh, wow, you're not as masculine as your images make you seem. And you're not this, you're not that. And my thing is I work out because I had an eating disorder. I have body dysmorphia, you know, I don't really like my appearance. Even now, I pick myself apart in the mirror to the point that I don't like to look at myself naked. And I understand that's very confusing because I take images, but that was, I originally started taking images because I wanted to prove to myself that I can do it, I can reach my physical goals. And my images used to just be my body. I didn't even have my face in it just because I don't like the way I look. But like, again, that goes back to my body dysmorphia and the trauma that I faced in my life. <laughs> like, no matter how many people say otherwise, I just don't see it for myself. But um, it, it, it goes back to, I can't properly communicate with men because we aren't a lot, like I said, you're, you're not truly showing them yourself in a full range. You're giving this false perception. And I don't know, it just makes everything more difficult. I mean, I'm still to the point where, like I said, I can't cry. I can't properly display emotions out of fear that my vulnerability will be met with anger again or be met with dissonance as in if I'm vulnerable with you will you leave because I showed vulnerability and that's not masculine enough I don't know I don't know I'm <laughs> Nico are you being vulnerable with like thousands of people on the internet that's just how I am I can't be vulnerable in person but if I'm talking to my phone what is my phone gonna do that kind of thing <laughs> so it's like like I said I think masculinity and vulnerability is hand in hand. I believe to truly be masculine is to truly accept that you need to be vulnerable at times and to fully be able to express these ranges of emotions because that's why we get into these relationships and you're always butting heads or you don't really know how to properly communicate or the, I don't know. It's just, I don't know. I feel like as men, even in the LGBT community, we need to work on being more in tune with our emotions. We need to learn that having emotions isn't bad and it shouldn't ostracize us from our relationships or from our friendships. And we need to let go of this image of hypermasculinity because I'm not saying, I'm not one of those people that's like, oh, down with masculinity because you can be masculine if you want to. I mean, I'm in a spectrum, you know, masculinity is a spectrum. I'm in the middle road. I'm masculine at times, but I'm also embracing of my feminine personality. So it's like, we need to be able to properly express that and not ostracize people for not being this stereotypical image of masculinity. Masculinity is truly accepting that you are vulnerable. It's truly expressing this range of emotions. Like as we saw in Moonlight, when Chiron shared that first intimate touch with Kevin, it, it, it truly showed that this perception, like Kevin is putting on a facade and school, he, he's bisexual, but he won't admit that, you know, because we saw that as soon as um, they finished the intimate moment on the beach, Kevin beat his ass in front of those people to show that he is a masculine man, that he is, he is not weak, he is not lesser than. And I feel like a lot of us have this internalized perception that we have to continue to put on this facade. And we really don't. Like, I feel like a lot of the relationships that have failed for me was either because I was not vulnerable enough or I was too vulnerable. And there's always a fine line, there's never an in-between because when I truly display emotions and I truly articulate how I'm feeling, people view that as feminine or they view that as too much, like too clean because they aren't used to being able to process emotions. They aren't used to being vulnerable with somebody. So when you're actually vulnerable or communicating your emotions with somebody and they say, oh, you're doing too much or oh, you're emotional, it's because they are trapped in this mindset that emotions are bad and to be a man, even in a man-on-man -man relationship, you need to be close and you need to be emotionless other than lust, anger, and not even joy. You're not allowed to show joy. You're not allowed to smile. Like, it's it's so weird. I don't know. I don't know. You know what? This entire conversation, I don't know. I'm just expressing my trauma and my vulnerability with you guys. I hope that you understand where I'm trying to come from. 
I just feel like we all need to be a bit more vulnerable. I feel like we need to redefine what masculinity is. But yeah, that's my video. <laughs> See you guys next time. Ah. And once again, a quick thank you to all my patrons on Patreon and a quick shout out to my third eye tier patrons. Your support means everything to me and helps me do this a lot more smoothly. I will also be listing this week's live stream topic in case anybody wants to join in on the fun. I'll see you guys there.